Hello, everyone. I am Vishal Saredi, content creator at GeoGenius. And I'm Pranay Varada, director of content creation here at GeoGenius. And we would like to welcome all of you back to the second annual GeoGenius Geography B Finals. Let us begin by introducing our top five competitors. From the Garden State, eighth grader Tom Katuosko. Also from the Garden State, eighth grader Srinidea Vempati. And from the Hawkeye State, sixth grader Normal Malum. From the Evergreen State, ninth grader Warren Huang. And last but not least, from the Lone Star State, eighth grader, uh, ninth grader Ashmit Kumbala. Congratulations to our finalists. We began the competition with hundreds of competitors from all over the world who participated in the preliminary round on July 10th. And the top 40 scores advanced to the semifinal round. After the scores from this preliminary and semifinal rounds were added together, we were able to determine our 10 finalists. Yesterday, we narrowed the field down to five after 10 rounds. Now, here's how today's competition will work. At the end of yesterday's competition, the top five were assigned a certain number of lives based on the number of points they had at the end of the first phase. The more points they accumulated, the more lives they got. Each person in the top five will begin with a minimum of three lives. Every time they miss a question, they lose a life. The final two competitors to still have lives remaining will advance to the championship round. Let's remind the audience how many points each competitor accumulated yesterday. There you have it. You can see Warren was in the lead after yesterday's competition with 22 points. Ashmit close behind with 21. Srinidaya and Tom with 19 each, and Normal survived a grueling tiebreaker to make it into the top five with 18 points. So now let's take a look at how many lives each competitor will have to start today's round. All right, you can see Warren out there with five lives, Ashmith with four, and the rest of our five competitors, the rest of our five competitors, three competitors left with three. So there we have it. The championship round which will happen after we narrow the field down to two, will operate in a best of five format. At the end of five questions, whoever has answered more questions correctly will be declared the champion of the second annual GeoGenius Geography B. If both contestants are tied after five questions, we will move on to sudden death tiebreakers. Whoever gets a question right that the other one doesn't will be declared the champion. So as you all know, this B is being run by geogenius.org website whose mission it is to spread geographic literacy to students around the world. We have several members of our team on the call today, including our host and director of marketing and analytics, Nishant Krishnan, our scorekeeper and associate head of software development, Jonathan Song, and to help preserve the integrity of the competition, content creator, Sean Cheng. Well, I think we are all ready. So let us get started with the competition. You know that feeling when there's something that you want to say, but don't know how to say in your language? This round is about that. More specifically, words in other languages with no direct English translation. Round 11 is called speechless. Each of you will receive a different question and you will have 12 seconds to answer. So we will start off with Tom. Tom, are you ready? Yes. All right, here's your question to start us off today. Have you ever tapped someone on the opposite shoulder, causing them to turn around and wonder who it was when they see no one there? In the official language of one Southeast Asian country, the word for that is mencholek. Name this language, a standardized variety of Malay that is actually a second language for over 150 million people in its country. Indonesian. Indonesian is correct. Good job. And next up, we have Srini Dea. Srini, are you ready? Yeah. All right, here's your question. The Yaghan word, Mami Lapin Atapai, is often interpreted as referring to the look shared by two people who want to do something, but are hoping that the other person will start it. The Yaghan language, 
now spoken by just one native speaker on Navarino Island, is an indigenous language of what archipelago, separated from the South American mainland by the Strait of Magellan? Tierra del Fuego. Tierra del Fuego is correct. You lose no lives there. Good job. And next, we have Nirmal. Nirmal, are you ready? Yes. All right, here's your question. You know that high-pitched squeaking noise people make when wanting to attract the attention of a dog or a child? Well, in the language of one Pacific Island nation, there is actually a word for that, fa'amiti. Name this language, which is also spoken in a US territory whose capital is Pago Pago. Samoan? Samoan is correct. Good job to you too. And next we have Warren. Warren, are you ready? Yes. All right, here's your question. Have you ever eaten something that tasted so good you kept eating, eating it even though you were full? Well, in the official language of one former Soviet Republic on the Eastern coast of the Black Sea, there is a word for that. Shemome Jamo. Name this language, the most widely spoken of the Kartvelian languages which are unrelated to any other language family. Georgian. Georgian is correct. Good job to you too. And finally, we have Ashmith. Ashmith, are you ready? All right, here's your question to end this round. If you've ever felt like something was crawling on your skin, the word yuputka from the Ulwa language describes that feeling. Ulwa is one of the indigenous Misumalpan languages spoken on the Mosquito Coast of what Central American country that is home to the largest freshwater lake in the region? Nicaragua. Nicaragua is correct. Good job to you too. Wow, it looks like all of you get that question, get your question right for this round. So good job to all of you. So let us take a look at that table. And as I said, no one loses a life in that round. So good job to all of you. Warren still with five, Ashmith with four, and Srini, Tom, and Nirmal with three. All right, so looks like we're ready to go to round 12. This round is a common question, so get out your writing devices. Cameras and microphones on for this round, and hands in view of the camera. So as you know, I'll repeat this question twice, so you may not ask for a spelling or repeat. Are y'all ready? Yes. Yes. All right, here's your question. In 1876, missionaries from the Church of Scotland founded a city in Southeastern Africa that they named after the birthplace of the explorer, David Livingstone. Name the city, now the commercial capital of Malawi, which was projected by the Global Cities Institute to be one of the world's 15 largest cities in the year 2100. Once again, in 1876, missionaries from the Church of Scotland founded a city in Southeastern Africa that they named after the birthplace of the explorer, David Livingstone. Name this city, now the commercial capital of Malawi, which was projected by the Global Cities Institute to be one of the world's 15 largest cities in 2100. You have 12 seconds starting now. That is time. All right, could you all please reveal your answers? And we'll start with Tom, what do you have? Oh, can you see my Blantyre? Yes, I can see that. Uh, Srini, what do you have? Blantyre. Normal? Blantyre. Warren? Blantyre. And Ashmit? Blantyre. So you all have the same answer, and that answer is correct. It is Blantyre, so none of you lose a life there. Nice job to everyone in that round. So it uh, looks like we should be able to take a look at the table again. And no one has lost a life yet. So we remain the way we were at the beginning of the competition. Good job to all of you in these last two rounds. So let's move on to round 13. This round is called Species Under Threat. 
and it is about some of the critically endangered species that inhabit our world. Each of you will receive a different question and you will have 12 seconds to answer. So are you guys ready? Yes. All right, let's start with Tom once again. Tom, are you ready? Yes. All right, here's your question. The Amur leopard, sorry, the Amur leopard, which had a population of just around 90 as of 2019, is one of the rarest big cats on the planet. One of the few places in China where Amur leopards have been spotted is the Hunchun National Nature Reserve in the Jilin province, which protects coniferous and deciduous forests in which major mountain range that also includes Pike Tu Mountain. The Amur Mountains? Uh, I'm sorry, the correct answer to that question is the Changbai Mountains, so you lose a life there. Next up, we have Srini. Srini, are you ready? Yeah. All right, here's your My question. hands in view, right? Yes, I see your hands in view. So All right. Here's your question. The Fatu Hiva monarch, a species of monarch flycatcher, experienced a population decline of over 90% during a recent 21 year period, mostly due to the introduction of black rats. This species is endemic to the island of Fatu Hiva, a member of which remote archipelago of French Polynesia that lies about 850 miles northeast of Tahiti. Is it the Society Islands? I'm sorry, the correct answer to that question is the Marquesas Islands. So you also lose a life there. As we move on to Nirmal. Nirmal, are you ready? Yes. All right, here's your question. The critically endangered hawksbill sea turtle can be found in Tortuguero National Park, which is only accessible by airplane or boat. Tortuguero National Park protects mangroves, swamps, and rainforests northwest of which port city that is the largest on Costa Rica's Caribbean coast. Um, is it Limon? Limon is correct, so you don't lose a life there. Good job to you. And next, we have Warren. Warren, are you ready? Yes. All right, here's your question. Prius's red colobus, a critically endangered primate species threatened by deforestation and hunting, has significant populations in Korup National Park. Adjacent to Cross River National Park, across the border, and just inland from the Gulf of Guinea, Korup National Park is located in what country? Could you repeat the question, please? Sure thing. Prius's red colobus, a critically endangered primate species threatened by deforestation and hunting, has significant populations in Korup National Park. Adjacent to Cross River National Park across the border, and just inland from the Gulf of Guinea, Korup National Park is located in what country? Cameroon. Cameroon is correct, so you don't lose a life there either. Good job to you, Warren. And finally, to end this round, we have Ashmith. Ashmith, are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, here's your question. Although the black rhino was the most populous rhino species for most of the 20th century, it is now critically endangered with three subspecies having been declared extinct. One nearly extinct subspecies inhabits the valley of what river that forms part of the Angola-Zambia border before crossing the Caprivi Strip and later flowing into the Zambezi. Um, is it the Kwanzaa River? Uh, could you repeat your answer? The Kwanzaa River. I'm sorry, the correct answer there is the Kwando River. So sorry, you also lose a life there. Looks like that was a tough round. So let's take a look at the table after that round.
Okay, so it looks like we have the table there and uh, the, we have an update. Uh, Warren still staying strong with five lives at the top. Ushmith, you now have three lives along with Nirmo who stays with three lives. And Trini and Tom, you both now have two lives before you will have to exit the competition. So good so, job to all of you so far. Yeah. yeah, and that's it for the rounds. We've run out of rounds and we're now moving on to the rapid fire questions. All of these questions will be common questions about any geographic topic in the world. If you get a question right, you stay alive. But if you get a question wrong, you lose a life unless everyone else also misses it. If you lose your last life, you'll be eliminated from the competition. Once our third remaining finalist loses their last life, we'll declare our third place winner and move on to the championship round. Let's begin. Are you all ready? Yeah. yeah. Wait, so just, one, one, just one quick question. Yeah. So like in the championship round, your lives get reset, right? No, uh, your lives will continue. Uh, yeah, in the championship round, uh, it's a blank slate. So that will just be best of five. Okay. Uh, right. I have I have something to say. So uh, I have some like turbulency. So um, sometimes they the speaking is on and off for me. So uh, if I say like like repeat maybe a third time, can you do that? Because I have lots of like. Uh, I think repeating the question twice uh, should be okay. And uh, Oh, by the way, I should mention that you all are able to ask for two spellings throughout this phase of the competition. So are you guys ready to start with question one? Uh, yes. 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 Okay. So I'll ask the first question here. Here it is. And I'll repeat this question twice, so you may not ask for a repeat, but you may ask for a spelling. And you'll have 12 seconds to write down your answer. Within the last two years, Palau, Hawaii, Key West and the US Virgin Islands have all banned sunscreens containing oxybenzone because their chemicals can accumulate in polyps and damage their DNA. These, these bans were implemented to safeguard what surrounding ecosystem common to these areas. Once again, within the last two years, Palau, Hawaii, Key West and the US Virgin Islands have all banned sunscreens containing oxybenzone because their chemicals can accumulate in polyps and that damage their DNA. These bans were implemented to safeguard what surrounding ecosystem common to these areas. You have 12 seconds starting now. Just question, how do you spell, uh, spell polyps, please? Polyps is spelled P-O-L-Y-P-S. I'll reset right. the time. Here. Thank you. That is time. Y'all please reveal your answer. So Tom, what do you have? Coral reef. Srini? Coral reefs. Normal. Coral reefs. Warren? Coral reefs. And Ashmit. Coral reefs. And the correct answer is indeed coral reefs. So uh, you can see the picture there. Uh, and even in low concentrations, uh, the oxybenzone in sunscreen can make corals more vulnerable to bleaching and can disrupt their growth, which harms the incredible biodiversity found in coral reefs. And just a reminder to keep your answers up throughout the entire grading process, just to make sure we've got those correct. Okay. All right, so good job to all of you. It looks like none of you missed that common question. So we move on to rapid fire question number two. Here it is. Tabriz, a city located to the east of Lake Ormia, has a mostly Azerbaijani population, but is the fifth most populous city in what country? I repeat, Tabriz, a city located to the east of Lake Ormia, has a mostly Azerbaijani population, but is the fifth most populous city in what country? You have 12 seconds starting now. Time. All right, boards up. And we'll start once again with Tom. Tom, what do you have? Iran. Srini, what do you have? Iran, can you see it? Yes, I can see that. Uh, Nirmar, okay. what do you have? Iran. Warren? Iran. And Ashmith. Okay, looks like everyone has Iran. 
And you won't be surprised to hear that the correct answer to that question is Iran. So good job to all of you. None of you lose a life. All right, question three coming up. After one British, after one British city's, uh, after one British city's council approved Premier Lo Premier League club Everton's new stadium on Bramley Moor Dock, UNESCO's World Heritage Committee stripped a site in the city centre of its World Heritage status. Name this city on the Mersey Estuary, known as the home of the Beatles. Once again, after one British city's council approved Premier League clubs. Ev Premier League club Everton's new stadium on Bramley Moor Dock, UNESCO's World Heritage Committee stripped a site in the city center of its World Heritage status. Name this city on the Mersey Estuary, known as the home of the Beatles. Your time starts now. That's time. All right, would you all please reveal your answer, starting with Tom. Liverpool. Srini. Liverpool. Normal. Liverpool. Warren. Liverpool. And Ushmit. Liverpool. And of course, Liverpool is the correct answer. Good job to all of y'all so far in this rapid fire, rapid fire rounds. And we move on to question number four. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah. All right, here it is. The popular Mexican fast casual restaurant chains, Chipotle and Cadoba, both got their start in which US city that is the second most populous in the Mountain West after Phoenix? I repeat, the popular Mexican fast casual restaurant chains, Chipotle and Cudoba, both got their start in which US city that is the second most populous in the Mountain West after Phoenix? 12 seconds starts now. Time. All right, boards up. And we will start with Tom once again. What is your answer? Denver. Srini? Denver. Warren? El Paso. Nirmal? Mesa. What was that, sorry? Mesa. Oh, and Ashmith? Denver. All right, two different, or three different answers actually. The correct answer to that question is Denver. So Warren and Nirmal, you all, you both lose a life, but Ashmith, Tom, and Srini, you, you keep all of the lives you have so far. So good job to the three of you. And after that, let's take a look at the leaderboard, actually. So it looks like Warren, you now have four lives. Ashmith still staying with three, but Nirmal, you now have two lives, as well as Srini and Tom. So two more misses and you three will be out. So good job to all of you so far though. Okay, let's move on to question five. Here it is. Although aluminum ore makes up most of its export value, over three quarters of Guinea's 12 million residents work in what economic sector? Once again, although aluminum ore makes, makes up most of its export value, over three quarters of Guinea's 12 million residents work in what economic sector? Your time starts now. Time. All right, would you all please really answer, starting with Tom. Textiles. Srini. Agriculture. Normal. Agriculture. Warren. Agriculture. And Ushmit. Agriculture. So the correct answer is indeed agriculture. So Tom, unfortunately, used a life for that question. And uh, let's take a look at the image associated with this. Should be showing up on your screen soon. Yeah, so yeah. this picture uh, shows that uh, Guineans grow crops for subsistence, such as manioc, sweet potatoes, yams, and corn in addition to various fruits and agricultural commodities like sugarcane and palm. Just a little explanation behind that question. And let's take a look at the leaderboard after this. It's 
So you can see Warren still on four, Ushbeth on three, Normal and Trinidaya on two. And Tom, you have one more life in the competition. So many questions to go though. Okay. So let's move on to question number six. Are you guys ready? Yes. yes. All right, here it is. Ijui, an island in Lake Kivu, is one of the largest lake islands in the world. While the lake is partially located in Rwanda, Ijui is located entirely within what large Central African nation? I repeat, Ijui, an island in Lake Kivu, is one of the largest lake islands in the world. While the lake is partially located in Rwanda, Ijui is located entirely within what large Central African nation? You have 12 seconds starting now. Time. All right, boards up. Tom, what is your answer? Democratic Republic of the Congo. Srini? Democratic Republic of the Congo. Nirmal? The DRC. Warren? Democratic Republic of the Congo. And Ashmith? Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC. And you won't be surprised to hear that the correct answer to that question is the Democratic Republic of the Congo or DRC. So all of you get that question right. Good job. All right, here it is, question seven. Strasbourg, the official seat of the European Parliament, is located in the Alsace region of what country? Once again, Strasbourg, the official seat of the European Parliament, is located in the Alsace region of what country? Your time starts now. Time. All right, when you all please really enter, starting with Tom. France. Srini. France. Normal. France. Uh, I don't think I can see your. Uh, okay. Uh, Warren. France. And Ushman. Yes. And the answer is indeed France. So none of you lose life there. Nice job. All right, question number eight. Are you guys ready? Yes. <laughs> All right, here it is. The Nuller Bar Plain, named for its near treelessness, stretches nearly 700 miles from east to west, south of the Great Victoria Desert in which country? I repeat, the Nuller Bar Plain, named for its near treelessness, stretches nearly 700 miles from east to west, south of the Great Victoria Desert in which country? You have 12 seconds starting now. Time. All right, boards up. Once again, we start with Tom. What is your answer? Australia. Srini? Australia. Uh, Nirmal? Australia. Uh, yeah, I see that. Warren? Australia. And Ashmith. Five of the same answer, and you won't be surprised to hear that the correct answer, once again, is Australia. So good job to all of you. None of you lose a life. All right, question nine. Here it is. Which nation bordering Myanmar is estimated to have the largest overseas Chinese population of any country, with 9 million people of Chinese descent, making up around 14% of its population? Once again, which nation bordering Myanmar is estimated to have the largest overseas Chinese population of any country with 9 million people of Chinese descent, making up around 14% of its population? Your time starts now. That's time. All right, will you all please reveal your answers, starting with Tom? Thailand. Srini? Thailand. Warren? Thailand. Nirmal? Thailand. And Ashmit? 
Island. Uh, normal, uh, and Shreen, I don't think I saw your boards properly. Oh, sorry. I wrote the island with a cross it out. Like, oh, I wrote it, then I crossed it out after I showed you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the correct answer is indeed Thailand. So let's take a look at the picture. Should be a picture coming up soon. Yeah, so Chinese, tra started, uh, Chinese traders started uh, arriving in Thailand in the 13th century, and the Thai Chinese population has made important contributions to the nation's culture and economy. So nice job there. All of you got that question correct. And just another reminder to keep your answers up throughout the entire grading process. All right. Good job to all of you in that last question. So are you guys ready for question number 10? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Here it is. The Selanga River, one of the most distant headwaters of the Yenisei Angara River system, flows through the city of Ulan Ude before emptying into what large lake? I repeat, the Selanga River, one of the most distant headwaters of the Yenisei Angara River system, flows through the city of Ulan Ude before emptying into what large lake? Your time starts now. Fine. Fine. All right, boards up. We will start once again with Tom. What is your answer? Lake Baikal. Uh, yeah, I see that. Srini? Lake Baikal. Uh, yeah, okay, I see that. Nirmal? Lake Baikal. Yes, uh, Warren? Baikal. And Ashmith? Lake Baikal. All right, the same answer once again, and you won't be surprised here. The correct answer is indeed Lake by call. So good job to all of you. None of you lose a life once again. So that's 10 questions done. And we go now to question 11. Located between Lake Nokue and the Atlantic Ocean, Kotanu is the seat of government of which African country? Once again, located between Lake Nokue and the Atlantic Ocean, Kotanu is the seat of government of which African country? Your time starts now. That's time. All right, would you all please reveal your answers, starting this time with Tom? Oh, uh, Benin, can you see my hand? Yeah, uh, Srini? Benin, like you can see it. Yeah, Normal. Benin. Warren? Benin. And Ashmik? Benin. And of course, Benin is the correct answer. Nice job. All right, 11 questions done. So now we move on to question 12. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yes. Hans, can we just flip the page? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, Trini, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do, the, let's do it. Question 12. Cape Coral is a city located along the Kalusahachi River across from Fort Myers and is known for having over 400 miles of navigable waterways, more than any other city in the world. It is a popular retirement destination in what US state? I repeat, Cape Coral is a city located along the Kalusahatchi River, across from Fort Myers, and is known for having over 400 miles of navigable waterways, more than any other city in the world. It is a popular retirement destination in what U.S. state? 12 seconds starts now. Time. All right, boards up. Once again, we start with Tom. What is your answer? Florida. Srini? Florida. Nirmal? Florida. Warren? Florida. And Ashmith? Florida. All right. The correct answer to that question is Florida. So good job to all of you. None of you lose a life. 
And let's go to question 13 now. Even though they are native to temperate areas of East Asia, the world's largest exporter of soybeans is what tropical nation that grows genetically modified variants of the crop in the vast savannas of its interior? Once again, even though they are native to temperate areas of East Asia, the world's largest exporter of soybeans is what tropical nation that grows genetically modified variants of the crop in the vast savannas of its interior? Your time starts now. That's time. All right. Uh, so would you all please feel your answers? Let's start with Ashmit this time. Kenya. Srini. China. Warren. Argentina. Normal. Brazil. And Tom. Tanzania. Uh, so we had five different answers for this question. And I can tell you now that four of you are going to lose a life here because one of those answers is correct. The correct answer to this question is Brazil. So normal, you're the only one in this round to not lose a life. And let's take a look at the picture. Looks like we lost the slides. All right, we should be coming back up here. All right, so the answer is Brazil. So soybeans are grown in central Brazil, Cerrado, a region that was unfit for large-scale agriculture until the introduction of soil additives, such as lime and phosphorus in the late 20th century. While this has allowed the Cerrado bec to become a major breadbasket, it could be eventually detrimental to the region's understudied biodiversity. So let's take a look at the leaderboard now. And unfortunately, it looks like we have to say goodbye to Tom. Congratulations on your fifth place finish and for making it this far in the competition. Really amazing job. And uh, for the rest of the leaderboard, Warren with three lives, Ashmith and Normal with two, and Srinidaya with one life now remaining. All right, looks like that question was tough. And once again, congratulations to Tom for making it so far, getting a fifth place finish in our second annual Geo Genius Geography B. And thank you so much for participating in this year's edition. So now we move on to question number 14. Are the four of you ready? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here it is. Yes. Yeah. Although the Lao Islands belong to Fiji, Polynesian influence from a country directly to the east still remains. Name this island nation, which has a constitutional monarchy. I repeat, although the Lao Islands belong to Fiji, Polynesian influence from a country directly to the east still remains. Name this island nation, which has a constitutional monarchy. 12 seconds starts now. Time. All right, boards up. And this time we start off with Srini. What is your answer? Tonga. Uh, Nirmal, what is your answer? Tonga. Warren? Tonga. And Ashmith? Tonga. And you won't be surprised to hear the correct answer to that question is Tonga. So good job to the four of you for that. And you lose no lives. Question 15 now. Mount Kartala makes up a significant portion of an African country's largest island. Name this country whose second most populous city is Mutsamudu. Once again, Mount Kartala makes up a significant portion of an African country's largest island. Name this country whose second most populous city is Mutsamudu. You have 12 seconds starting now. That's time. All right, will you all please reveal your answers? And let's start with Ashmit. Omoros. Warren. Moros. Normal. Moros. And Srini. Omoros. 
And the answer is the Combros. So none of you lose a life there. Nice job. All right, on to question 16. Are you guys ready? Yes. yes. All right, here's your question. On July 29th, target shooter Alessandra Peri, who hails from Borgo Maggiore, won one European country's first ever Olympic medal. Name this country a micro state in the Apennine Mountains. I repeat, on July 29th, Alessandra Peri, who hails from the Borgo Maggiore, won one European country's first ever Olympic medal. Name this country, a micro state in the Apennine Mountains. You have 12 seconds starting now. Time. All right, boards up. Srini, what's your answer? San Marino. Nirmal? San Marino. Warren? San Marino. And Dan Smith? San Marino. And the correct answer to that question is San Marino. So good job to all of you. You get that right, and none of you lose a life. Okay, question 17. The Stau Mountain Resort is a popular skiing destination and is located on the eastern side of Mount Mansfield, the highest point of what U.S. state? Once again, the Stau Mountain Resort is a popular skiing destination and is located on the eastern side of Mount Mansfield, the highest point of what U.S. state? Your time starts now. Time. All right, will you all please reveal your answers? Let's start with Warren this time. Vermont. Normal. Vermont. Ashmith. Vermont. And Srini. Vermont. All right, and Normal, could you uh, move your board closer? Okay, yeah. So you all have Vermont, and that is correct. Nice job. All right, question number 18. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here it is. The Pilcomayo River, which forms part of Argentina's northern border, is a tributary of which other river that is the primary river of the Pantanal? I repeat, I repeat the Pilcomayo River, which forms part of Argentina's northern border, is a tributary of which other river that is the primary river of the Pantanal? 12 seconds starts now. Time. All right. We'll start once again with Srini. What's your answer? Corona River. Nirmal? The Paraguay River. Oren? Paraguay River. And Ashmith? Corona River. Two different answers this time from, from you guys. The correct answer to that question is the Paraguay River. So Nirmal and Warren, neither of you lose a life. Ashmith and Srini, both of you guys lose a life. And we will see how that affects the leaderboard. All right, so it look, it, this looks like, Streety, you now have zero life, so that means you have to exit the competition. But congratulations for your fourth place finish. You did really, really well. Thank you so much for participating and really great job on your finish. Thank you. And it looks like right. Warren, you still have three. Uh, Nirmal, you still have two, but Ashmith, you now have one life remaining. So be careful. All right, congratulations to Srini. And now we move on to question 19. Here it is. Pollution in the metropolitan areas of cities such as Kathmandu, Los Angeles, and Ulaanbaatar is worsened due to their positions in which type of landform, which allows pollutants to remain for longer periods of time. Once again, pollution in the metropolitan areas of cities such as Kathmandu, Los Angeles, and Ulaanbaatar is worsened due to their positions in which type of landform, 
which allows pollutants to remain for longer periods of time. Your time starts now. Time. All right, would you all please reveal your answers? Let's start this time with normal. Mountains. Warren. Valley. And Ushmit. Valleys. The correct answer is valleys. So let's take a look at the picture first. Should be coming up soon. Yeah, so Kathmandu, Los Angeles, and Ulaanbaatar are all located in valleys, and airborne pollutants can sink into a valley from which they can take a lot of time to escape. So that tells you the rationale behind that question. So let's take a look at the leaderboard now. It should be a change. And Warren is in the lead now with by two lives, with three lives in total. Normal and Ushmith both on their last life in the competition. So it's going to be a real test to see who will make it to the championship round. All right. Good job to you three who are now the top three in this competition, uh, might we say. So congratulations on that. And now we will move on to question number 20. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yes. All right. Here it is. Rangi Roa. The second largest atoll in the world is a hotspot for scuba divers because of its d diverse marine life. Rangiroa is located in the Tuamotu Archipelago in what overseas territory of France? I repeat, Rangiroa, the second largest atoll in the world, is a hotspot for scuba divers because of its diverse marine life. Rangiroa is located in the Tuamotu Archipelago in what overseas territory of France, 12 seconds starts now. Time. All right, boards up. And we will start with Nirmal, what is your answer? French Polynesia. Warren? French Polynesia. And Ashmith? French Polynesia. Three of you with the same answer, and the correct answer is indeed French Polynesia. So good job, you three. No one loses a life. All right, you guys ready for question 21? Yes. Yes. Okay, here goes. Ikaluk Tutiak is the traditional Inuyaktun name for Cambridge Bay, the largest settlement on what Canadian island? Bounded to the south by the Queen Maud Gulf and to the west by the Prince of Wales Strait. Once again, Ikalu Tutiak is the traditional Inuyaktun named for Cambridge Bay, the largest settlement on what Canadian island? Bounded to the south by the Queen Maud Gulf and to the west by the Prince of Wales Strait. Your time starts now. Time. All right, will you all please reveal your answers? Let's start this time with Ashmit. What do you have? Devon Island. Normal. Victoria Island. And Warren. Victoria Island. So we have two different answers here, and one of them is correct. The correct answer to this question is Victoria Island. So we can now announce our top two. And unfortunately, Ashmit, we have to say goodbye to you in this competition. Uh, you, you have lost your last life, and our top two are going to be Warren Huang and Normal Malam. So once again, really big congratulations to you on third place in this competition, surviving so far through all of these rounds. All right. Congratulations on Ashmith for his third place finish. And congratulations to Warren Huang from Washington and Nirmal Malam from Iowa. For making the championship round of this competition, you are guys. You guys are now our top two finishers in this competition. And competitors, before we get into the championship round, we are going to take a short break as we take a moment to congratulate the winners of our other contests. Yesterday, we announced the winners of the creative and written contests. And today, we are going to recognize the winners of the junior and college geography bees, the GeoGuessr Battle Royale Tournament, 
the head-to-head -head tournament and Jeopardy. All right, so let's get started with the Junior Geography Bee. Juniors in grades one through three took a 45 question multiple choice exam on July 10th, similar in format to the Senior B preliminary round that tested their knowledge and understanding of geography. So here were the, three top, the top three scores from that competition. With a score of 38, we had two competitors tie for third. The first, Texan third grader Farhan Altaf, and the second, a third grader from New Jersey, Nirvan Gidipali. So congratulations to the both of you for getting third place in the Junior Geography B. And in second, with a score of 41, a third grader from Wisconsin, Ethan Robert. And in first, with an outstanding score of 42 out of 45, a third grader from the state of Washington, Rohit Aute. So congratulations to all of our Junior B winners. Nice job. Now for the College Geography B. College undergraduates also took a 45 question multiple choice exam on July 10th. And it was the exact same test as the one used in the Senior B preliminary round. This exam, tested their knowledge and understanding of geography, as well as their ability to apply and analyze in geographic contexts. Now, here were the top three scores from that competition. In third place, with a score of 34, Duke University sophomore Brandon Weiss. And in second, with a score of 36, William and Mary Jr. Alexander Howe. And in first, with an amazing score of 38 out of 45, George Washington University junior Brian Sachs. Really, really great job to all our College B winners and an especially good job to Brian for his first place finish. So next up is the GeoGuessr Battle Royale tournament held this past Monday. The tournament utilized the popular online game GeoGuessr in which players try to guess as close to a Google Street View location as possible. Our contestants played the Battle Royale distance format, and from there, we found our top three. In third place, a ninth grader from Texas who also participated in this GOB and got third here, Ashmith Kumbala. In second, a ninth grader from Georgia, Anish Budida. And in first, the GeoGuessr champion, a fourth grader from Washington, Lakshya Veguru. Incredible skill from all our GeoGuessr tournament winners. And on Wednesday, we hosted the head-to-head -to -head tournament, the finals of which you can catch here on our YouTube channel. 41 top qualifiers from the Senior B preliminary round played 80 games in a double elimination tournament in which each game consisted of five rapid fire common questions. Each game was contested by two individuals and the winner moved on to the next round. From all those games, we determined our top three. So in third, again, a ninth grader from Texas, Ashmit Kumbala. And in second place, after an intense final round, a sixth grader from Iowa, Nirmal Malam, who's here with us today as well. And the finals were actually contested by the exact same two people as this competition. So the head-to-head -head champion, in, on Wednesday, who prevailed over everyone else in the tournament. Ninth grader from Washington, Warren Huang. And great geographic excellence from our head-to-head -head winners. And finally, we had Geogenius Jeopardy, which may or may not be based on a similarly named popular TV game show. So our contestants took a qualifying test on July 11th, from which we selected nine semifinalists. Over three days of semifinals, three finalists were found from the semifinalists and they participated in the Jeopardy finals yesterday, which you can also watch here on our YouTube channel. In third place, a junior from Northwestern University, Jake Lyons. And in second, a sophomore from Duke University, Brandon Weiss. And in first, who participated in our competition yesterday, an 11th grader from Michigan, Vade Mutasami. 
Big congratulations to all our Jeopardy winners. All right. It is the moment that you've all been waiting for. The championship round of the second annual GeoGenius Geography B. To get here, our contestants have taken a preliminary exam. They've gone through an arduous semifinal round. They survived the 10 rounds of day one of the competition. And they've prevailed over the three remaining finalists here today. And now, only one round separates either of them from victory. Here are the top two of this year's competition, Warren Huang from the state of Washington and Nirmal Malam from the state of Iowa. Now, you guys know the rules. Five common questions to determine the winner 12 seconds to write down your answers. We repeat each question twice, so you may not ask for a spelling or repeat. If the score is tied after five questions, we'll move on to tiebreakers. Are you guys ready? Yes. Could you have your writing devices and hands in view? All right, Vishal, if you wanna get started with the first question. All right. If you guys are ready, let's get started with the first question of the championship round. Here it is. On July 19th, UNESCO removed Salonga National Park, the largest tropical rainforest reserve in all of Africa from its list of world heritage in danger, a major conservation victory. Salonga National Park lies to the east of Lake Mindombe, in which country? I repeat. On July 19th, UNESCO removed Salonga National Park, the largest tropical rainforest reserve in all of Africa, from its list of world heritage in danger, a major conservation victory. Salonga National Park lies to the east of Lake Mindombe, in which country? 12 seconds starts now. Time. All right, words up. This time we will start with Warren. What is your answer? DRC. Oh, can you move your board a bit down? Sorry. Yeah, there I see it. And Warren, or not Warren, Nirmal, sorry. The DRC. Two of the same answer, and you won't be surprised to hear the correct answer to that question is the DRC. So both of you with one point to start us off. All right, ready for question two? Yes. Okay, let's begin. Brazil, Guyana, and Venezuela all share portions of the Tepui, or tabletop mountain, that contains the highest point in the Pacarima Mountains. Name this Tepui, one of the many highlights of Venezuela's Canaima National Park. Once again, Brazil, Guyana, and Venezuela all share portions of the Tepui, or tabletop mountain, that contains the highest point in the Pacarima Mountains. Name this Tepui, one of the many highlights of Venezuela's Canaima National Park. Your time starts now. Time. All right, can you both please fill your answers? And Warren, what do you have? Mount Roraima. Normal? Mount Roraima. And naturally, the answer is Mount Rarima. So congratulations to both of you. You are now tied at 2-0. All right. Good job to both of you on the first two questions. So now we move on to question three. Are both of you ready? Yes. yes. All right. Here it is. Arunda people, or sorry, the Arunda people have lived in the region around one Australian city including the surrounding McDonnell Ranges for over 30,000 years. Name this city, known as Mpantrawa, to the Arunda, which is known for its sizable American expatriate population and its location on the north-south Stewart Highway, better known in Australia as the Track. I repeat, the Arunda people have lived in the region around one Australian city, including the surrounding McDonnell Ranges for over 30,000 years. Name this city, known as Mpantrawa, to the Arunda people, 
which is known for its sizable American expatriate population and its location on the north-south Stewart Highway, better known in Australia as the track. 12 seconds starts now. Time. All right, boards up. Uh, this time we will start with Nirmal. What is your answer? Alice Springs. And Warren? Alice Springs. And you won't be surprised to hear the correct answer to that question is indeed Alice Springs. So good job to both of you. So the score is now tied at three to three. Let's go into the fourth question now. German style architecture and one of the most well-known breweries in the world are products of the German occupation of one present day Chinese city from 1891 to 1914, which the Qing Empire was powerless to stop. Name the city in Shandong province, linked to Huangdao district by the Jiaozhou Bay Bridge. Once again, German style architecture and one of the most well-known breweries in the world are products of the German occupation of one present day Chinese city from 1891 to 1914, which the Qing Empire was powerless to stop. Name the city in Shandong province, linked to Huangdao district by the Jiaozhou Bay Bridge. You have 12 seconds, starting now. Time. All right, will you both please really answer? Let's start with normal, what do you have? Magdal. Uh, can you move your board closer? I still can't see it. No. And uh, Warren? Ching Dao. The correct answer out of these two different answers, because one of you is correct, is Ching Dao. So Warren takes a 4 3 lead going into the final question. All right, both of you know how this works. Nirmal, if you get this question correct while Warren gets this question wrong, there will be a tiebreaker to determine the winner of this year's B. Warren, if you get this question correct, no matter what, you will be declared the champion of the second annual Geogenius Geography B. So, are you both ready for question number five of the championship round? Yes. yes. All right, here it is. Mexico's largest seaport, located in the state of Michoacan, was named after a former Mexican president from the state who served from 1934 to 1940 and founded Pemex, the state-owned oil company. Name this port city situated at the mouth of the Balsas River. I repeat, Mexico's largest seaport located in the state of Michoacan was named after a former Mexican president from the state who served from 1934 to 1940 and founded Pemex, the state-owned oil company. Name this port city, situated at the mouth of the Balsas River. 12 seconds starts now. Time. All right, words up. And this time we will start with Nirmal. What is your answer? Ozero. And Warren, what is your answer? The Pata Morelos. Okay, two different answers once again. The correct answer to that question is Lazaro Cardenas. So we will have to check to see if Nirmal, your answer is correct, but I believe your answer will not be accepted. Let's take some time to make sure that that is the case.
sorry, we were just taking some time to make sure that we get to the right resolution here, so. All right, so we have decided the resolution to this situation. So Nirmal, your answer of Lazaro will be unacceptable from, because we need the full name Lazaro Cardenas. So that means by a score of four to three, Warren Huang, you are our champion of the second ever Geo Genius Geography B. Congratulations, Nirmal. Sorry to say, but you have been second place, but congratulations for getting so, so, so far in this B and thank you, thank to both of you for participating and really, really great job. So congratulations to the champion of the second annual GeoGenius Geography B, Warren Huang from the state of Washington. So that concludes the second annual GeoGenius Geography B. Thank you to all our viewers for watching this competition. Thank you to all our participants in the B for participating uh, in so many different events throughout the month of July and for really making this a wonderful geographic experience for our entire community and the users of our site. So great job to everyone who participated, especially great job to Warren Huang for winning the second annual GeoGenius Geography Bee. Yes, uh, I would like to say that again. Congratulations to Warren, congratulations to Nirmal as well, and Ashmith for third, and all of our top 10 finalists, as well as all everyone who participated in all of our events this year. Without you guys, we couldn't have held this. So thank you so much for participating and congratulations to Warren and Nirmal. And I think that does it. So thank you everyone for coming and watching the second part of the finals of the second ever GeoGenius Geography B. Thank you all for watching. I just want to say thank you for hosting this video. It was very fun. Yeah, thank you so much, Tom.